This is the Edmunds test track. This is the Mustang Dark Horse. I'm Alistair Weaver with the latest edition of Edmunds, fully tested. Over the next few minutes, we're going to give you the numbers. We're going to remind you how this Dark Horse differs from other Mustangs. And we're going to push it to the limit to find out whether it really is worth over 70 grand. Yes, 70 grand of your hard earned cash. Is this Dark Horse really one to watch, or should it be sent to the glue farm? Let's get on with it. Our regular watchers of our channel will know that we've done tons of content around the new Mustang, but this is the first time we've had the Dark Horse here at the Edmunds test track, and we know these are the numbers that you really care about. The Dark Horse is the halo car for the seventh generation Mustang, designed to sprinkle a bit of stardust on the rest of the range and provide a, a link with the track and race cars that Ford is also developing. Think of it as a spiritual successor to the GT350 and the Mustang Mach 1. It's also a car without too many obvious rivals, with the Challenger and the Camaro both being sadly sent to the knackers yard. The only obvious rivals come from overseas. The new Nismo version of the Nissan Z is philosophically similar but has only two seats, and the BMW M2 is smaller and, well, really, really ugly. Honestly, it's hard to be a dark horse when you're the only nag in town. Let's remind ourselves about what's special about the Dark Horse. Put simply, they've improved the breathing and the cooling to increase the horsepower to 500. That's 20 more than a Mustang GT. They've dabbled with the aero, tweaked the suspension, bolted on some stickier tires, and, most importantly, designed a new badge. This is the first Mustang with a forward-facing horse. Put that in your pub quiz. If you want the full lowdown, Google Edmunds Dark Horse or click on the handy link. After 60 years of practice, Ford really understands the Mustang formula. There are no surprises in here. It's very simple and very, very alpha. And that's turned up a notch on this Dark Horse. You get a thicker flat bottom steering wheel. You get a fantastic 3D printed titanium gear knob. These chunky Recaros feel fantastic. There are 16 hundred dollar option and even get a cute little plaque here right in front of the passenger which identifies exactly which of the dark horses you personally own that's a nice feature then of course there's this giant screen which is a signature feature of the seventh generation mustang it's either split into two or if you go for the premium package you get one single pane of glass and it does have some very cool features. Now you might be wondering why we have the manual car instead of the automatic that even Ford admits is faster against the clock. Well, the answer's simple. This is a Mustang Dark Horse, so you're not gonna buy the auto, are you? Mm -mm. No. Marvellous. Right, let's hand over to Jonathan O'Fallon, our head of testing, to run the numbers. The supercomputer has worked its magic, and here are the headlines. The Dark Horse galloped from 0 to 60 in 4.6 seconds, and covered the quarter mile in 12.8 at 111.6 miles an hour. It stopped from 60 in 94 feet, and achieved an impressive 1.12 G on our skid pad. In the great pantheon of Mustang tests, these results reveal the benefit of sticky rubber, and the compromise of a stick shift. For comparison, the 2021 Mach 1 Auto we tested was faster against the clock, but it had marginally less grip. The latest GT Performance Auto also accelerated more quickly, but was less good at stopping and turning. And the GT Manual was marginally slower to 60, but actually faster to the quarter, despite the power deficit. And for context, Edmund's own Shelby GT500 hit 60 in 3.8 seconds and ran the quarter in 11.3 at 130. So, the Dark Horse is rapid, but not that rapid. Let's hit the track. So, what do we notice? Well, firstly, we're in full track mode, so this is as stiff and as focused as this car ever gets. This is a, a pretty smooth surface, but it's all second and third gear stuff. And this is a fabulous gearbox, down into second, feed the power. There is so much grip from these Trofeos, which really do look like they've been plundered from the race car. Not sure what they'll be like on, in wet weather, but out here in the California sunshine, the 
they're offering tons of grip and confidence. What they don't do though is make a lot of noise, so you feel that loss of loss of grip faster than you actually hear it. And let's turn it in. This has a very kind of sharp turn. In the initial turn, you get an instantaneous response, more so than in the standard car. But then, once the body started to turn, it does something that feels more traditionally Mustang-like. It, it sort of rolls a little and then takes a set, and it's then that you can start to, to feed the power again. So it's not as, as stiff and as focused as, say, our much-loved Shelby GT500 that Edmunds has owned for the last five years. This is a different feel. It's more of a kind of traditional Mustang feel. You turn in, it takes a set, and then it goes about its business. And then the transition from push into oversteer, if you really get on the on the throttle, is much more gradual to the extent that there is so much getting a little bit of push, half the power starts to get a little bit of rotation in the rear. What it does have compared to the GT though is much, much better brakes, both in terms of their ultimate stopping performance, these are some of the best brakes we've ever tested here, but also in the confidence that the pedal gives you, it's really nicely judged. You don't get oodles of feel through the steering, that's something regular watchers will know that I, I really enjoy, it's certainly not Porsche-like, but you can at least get a, a reasonable sense of what the front tyres are doing, it's not quite like Mustangs of old. And with all this grip on this dry circuit, actually 500 horsepower feels extremely well contained, and of course there's the noise. And the automatic rev matching which I'm using for the downshift works supremely well and of course makes you feel like a hero. Now this car has the track package, it has the Magna Ride suspension. So it does do a really nice combination of decent on-road ride quality. I've been driving this car all weekend. I've had my four-year-old strapped into, the, into a child's in the rear on the way to school. And like all Mustangs, it does a pretty good job of, of posing as an everyday tool. But of course, when you turn it up to track mode, you're expecting a lot more. And of course, it is stiffer. It is more composed on the circuit than the, than the standard GT, but it's not a big leap. It still feels like an iteration, like part of the same lineage. It's not like a GT500 that we own where you get into anything. This is an entirely different car. It almost feels almost like un-Mustang like. This remains very much a Mustang. It's just that everything's been turned up a little bit. Is it more fun to drive than the GT? Well, the brakes are better and it does feel a little bit more planted, but it does mean that there'll be room above this for a for a Shelby, whether that's a Shelby with a, a ton more power or just a, a more track focused chassis setup. You also never quite escape the feeling the Mustang is and always has been a, a big heavy car. You've got a lot of mass around you and although technology and tire grip and everything else has really worked over the years to, to kind of offset that, that physical disadvantage, you're always conscious it's a it's a big old lump, but I don't want to sound too negative. I'm enjoying this car, absolutely. The noise, the sensation, the wonderful manual gearbox. This is pretty much the only car left that you can buy new now that can do this sort of thing. It's like the last of the, the, last of the silent movie stars. to the final analysis. And let's start with what the Dark Horse is. It is a sensible evolution of a Mustang GT. It's a bit faster, it's a bit sharper, it is, to my eyes at least, a bit cooler, and it's certainly a lot more exclusive. But it's not a hardcore track car like the Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. It's not a Shelby without the snake. Is it objectively worth $16,000 more model for model than a Mustang GT? Well, probably not. I still want one.